Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back. We're Poe on the Call. My name is Chris Rivers. And I'm Mandy Mack. Yes, and we are here for a whole new episode. And today we are having a conversation on Poe history slash Poe tricks. <laughs> yes. And at first we were going to um, do a, a whole episode about Poe history, but then it turned into... There's there's so many websites and information and, and everything. So we pretty much just wanted to talk about it and give you a list so you can look at it for yourself. <laughs> yes, it's going to be like a conversation um, with that. Um, a disclaimer, we are not historians. We did some research, so maybe we are researchers, <laughs> but not <laughs> historians. So we don't know the validity of any of this information. We are going to discuss it as in a normal conversation, and we are going to link the resources of which we found them below to help you out. Um, and of course, with any information that you find on the internet, take what you find to be true and what not to be true and make your own opinions and be smart and safe about it. <laughs> yes. Thank you for that, Chris. <laughs> right. And this conversation was spurred off of, um, I mean, there's many times when you'll go to another studio and you'll be like, Oh, the name of this trick is different. Um, and then it's a laugh and, and um, occasionally I'll get, um, you know, questions from other teachers asking me what we call this trick. Um, to kind of build some sort of standardization and I always think about that because um, like what we call the tricks are are different for for reasons um, and then we were trying to think about like the origins of some tricks and we tried to look them all up and it's really hard to find the origins of the pull tricks mostly because yes. um, they were made up in the strip clubs and people just <laughs> did them because they were awesome um, but there were a few that we were able to um, track down the origins of, which we'll share. Um, and then we wanted to touch upon like a little bit of the language that we use in poll class um, for poll tricks. Um, and these are just things to think about. And they're not like things that you should, you know, do the same thing that I'm going to suggest because these are my opinions and everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> again, with the disclaimers. And then we'll share some um, poll trick dictionaries and um, combo dictionaries and all that sort of thing um, that we found on the internet that we, we thought were really cool. So to go into, I guess, um, what we started and what we found, multiple resources on pole history. Um, so I guess an exotic dance started in maybe Sumerian, ancient Sumerian, which brings it up to stripping in the 1920s. But before then, we had Maypole, which was, what, maybe 800, 1,000 years ago? Um, yeah. And it was a pagan holiday where they were, there was a pole, and they would tie a ribbon on it, and it'd be in between, goodness, I hope I'm correct, spring and summer, to, uh, to say goodbye to that season and welcome the next one. Um, but of course, look up more information on that and find out the history of that. I was, when I read that, I was like, oh my God, that would be such a beautiful routine somehow. Um, yes. And there's some, some festivals. Um, I mean, I went to a Renaissance festival where, where they did do the maypole dance and it was really beautiful and That's you awesome. just like weave the, yeah, but I'm sure it wasn't like, um, you know, exactly what <laughs> it was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and then what else do we find? Um, 800 years ago, also Chinese pole, um, which was more acrobatics. Um, they said it was rubber coated. Oftentimes they had to wear multiple layers for, to avoid friction burns. And they would, I don't know if you've seen it, oftentimes jump from one pole to another doing death defying, gra gravity defying tricks. Um, I've always wanted to really try Chinese pole <laughs> one day because um, I like that scary stuff for sure. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I did try the Chinese pole at one point and it was really awesome. Yes. And... I, <laughs> I can imagine like on a steel or chrome pole, it's so much fun on a silicone or rubber pole on a kill it and he's stuck. Yes, <laughs> that's how I felt. 
um, and then we had we found also about a hundred years ago or so we're not sure which one was first and of course always look up your information um goodness i hope i'm saying it right malikam in india which was wrestlers on the pole and what they did with that was they would do two things they would either demonstrate their strength and their body physique on the pole doing cool things like their versions of iguanas shoulder mount planks or they would use it for a quick training session for their whole body in order to get them ready for a wrestling match which i thought was pretty cool um as always look up this information the links are going to be below this is what i found and what mandy found mostly <laughs> <laughs> right there was a lot of links that had um very similar information so yes. you know we can only assume that it could be true um you know, of course everyone could just be doing the telephone game yes for <laughs> sure um i do believe that chinese po and indian po has been around and maple has been around for a while um I just don't know if the timing is right, which came first and things like that. Yeah. So, and all of those like exist uh, today as well. Yeah. Same. All of those styles still exist. Yes. Today. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. then from what we read into stripping um started maybe in the 1900s, early 1900s, 1920s. <laughs> Um, it wasn't what you see now, of course. It was just walking around the pole, doing a couple turns, maybe a, a step and slide. Um, and then where did you find about when the strip clubs open? Um, I believe it was like around the 1970s when like our mo modern strip clubs um, first began. Clubs. Yeah, with, with the pole. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. And of course, stripping started with burlesque, little fun, sexy dances like that, and other types of exotic, um, let me not say the erotic, mm -hmm. sensual dancing. Some people don't like the word exotic, which we can get into with wording. Yeah, we'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that is, I don't know if there's anything else that you remember from the history, but that is what we were able to find for the most part. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I mean, if you look in the Wikipedia, um, it had, you know, all of that information and very little about stripping. And I was like, you know, I had to look in the the notes of it. And it looks like people were, you know, talking about the fact that it was not combined with stripping. And then they were talking about how they should like organize the history of modern pole dance, the history of pole dance in general, the history of like pole sports um, and all sorts of other aspects of it so it's just um, a whole bunch of different stuff <laughs> um but yeah like like chris said earlier we we looked at it on the internet and a lot of the stuff was similar for all the websites but again it could be just you know everyone reading from one person and then copying and then that's what everyone thinks is true <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I read the Wikipedia one last, and I was like, oh, damn, now I wonder if all these sources I read before got it from here. <laughs> right? Like, you you never know. And then, I mean, maybe someone does know, and that's kind of why we wanted to have this conversation, um, because, you know, we don't know, and we were very interested, and um, I'm sure other people are interested, too. And also, that's why we're doing this podcast, to kind of <laughs> document what's going on now. So that yes. um, people in the future can have something to look back on. Um, now in pole dance, there is a movement to make it more known as a fitness and sport and bring it to the Olympics. But I think maybe we'll talk about that in part two of this episode. Yep. Teaser! <laughs> we started a sneak <laughs> away. Um, so, right, there's a lot. <laughs> I know. So part two, we're thinking of doing a history of pole competitions and showcases and dances performance opportunities yeah that is that would be another cool way to kind of track the history of pole mm -hmm. um because pole has changed over the years yeah yeah <laughs> for sure yeah and i think I, they said the first pole studio opened in 1990 or something like that um 
And yeah. then I, I remember competitions, Mr. and Miss Poe. Um, yeah. And it's like, I can't even remember that far back. <laughs> yeah. And probably that's maybe that's when people started, you know, really thinking about the names of the trick because now you have to teach them. And how are you going to convey, you know, <laughs> what, what the tricks are called? Yes. So that'll be in a part two episode coming your way soon. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, I think, do you have anything else to say about the history? Not that I can remember. We read a lot. You sent me a lot. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I wanted to bring up, um, there's a really good, probably the best one that I read. And and I um, I follow a blogger on poll a lot. And she's amazing. And she has a really amazing article about the history of poll mm-hmm. um, and, you know, modern pole dance. And she has lots of resources listed um and there's also another um i don't know if the documentary is out it looked like it was being made um but fistful of steel from uh dancer am davies of yes a stripper and strippers united also had lots of um good history information and interviews and, and things like that from pole dancers yeah but we'll list all of that below so that you can <laughs> look at that for yourself um, but yeah, I think I, I wanted to to talk about like language in pole dance too, because and and like trick names. And I think the the funniest one, and this was like I was like, this is the last straw. I want to find out because the chopper. Um, so I always, you know, you know, it's the chopper. It's the invert where you you know open your legs. <laughs> it's like the move that everyone does. Um, but it comes to find out that the chopper was named after, and I thought it was a helicopter, but I feel like that not a lot of people call a helicopter a chopper, but also someone said that it is called a chopper because it was a spinning invert. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, that makes so much more sense. But like how I was taught it, it was just an invert with your legs out was a chopper. And it's just funny how, um, I didn't think about <laughs> what the, the name of it was and what it might mean. Um, and now I think about it, it might be more um, like, I see the helicopter, I see it, but it could also be like a food chopper. Like that makes sense to me if you're spinning. But then am I wrong to say that a V invert without being on a spin pole is not a chopper? That's what I was like, oh no. <laughs> I know now <laughs> in certifications you usually hear it as like a straddle invert. Yeah. So the the thing is, like, I don't think it confuses anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and I do think it will always vary from, from studio to studio or, you know, from region to region where you come from. Um, but yeah, the pole trick names. Um and and what <laughs> what they mean, um, the ones in particular that I um, made a little bit of changes to because they they feel like they make the language of them makes more sense. If I think about instead of like a leg hang, for me a leg hang sounds like I'm like hanging, and that's only because I'm a hypermobile pole dancer. I want to feel like I'm hooking, like I'm gonna hook my leg. So for me personally, when I teach, instead of calling it a leg hang, I call it a leg hook. And I don't think that that is um, doing a detriment to anyone by changing that language. But I wanted to bring that up because that's something that maybe we could think about. Um, I know in a past interview we had with Scarlet Inferno, um, she brought up the the term of, uh, like, we call it a crash mat. Like, we crash on this big cushy mat and it's for safety. But she said we should call it a safety mat, which, yeah, <laughs> that makes so much more sense. And it takes like the like crash, like I don't want to crash on it, but for safety, yes, yeah, so I'll have the safety mat underneath me. And that makes sense of why I'm using it. Um, yeah, just little things for, for language. Um, another one that I have personally changed is the crucifix. For me, the image of um, that I get of this when I say this word is not one that I want to think about when I'm pole dancing. So I changed it into the inverted T. <laughs> and I don't think that is hurting anyone. Um, 
and it still gets across what the pull move is. Um, and I the upright T as well. Um, there's some other tricks that I've that I've changed. <laughs> um, I no, I kind of changed Batman because I don't think there's a Batwoman, so now I um call it the bat or bat person. <laughs> I can't. that's the thing. So there's also let's talk about the mermaid because when I first learned the mermaid, I learned it as the falling lady. And I like right away, I was like, I don't want to call it the falling lady. <laughs> I like it as the reverse fallback. Okay, so I like that. I was trying to think of another term because now we use mermaid, which I also like. But then, um, you know, some people might have an issue of it being, you know, gendered and, and not being inclusive. So just something to think about. And again, these are not for everyone. Um, these are just something that, you know, we've thought about at Pole in the Wall. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's I know I thought about it because one time I taught a trick I maybe it was I don't know what it was maybe like archer or something and it was like a male gender specific and one of the female students was like well I don't like that what if I don't want to call it that and I was like well, call yeah it. like this is what I learned there. if it's called something else I apologize so it might not mm -hmm. seem important to you but it is important to other people which I learned quick <laughs> Right. And people are not always willing to like tell you that they felt uncomfortable after you said a name of a, of a trick. Um, and they might not even feel like they belong anymore. Um, which is, you know, some, just something to think about. <laughs> um, like the Superman, I try my best to always call it the superhero now because superhero is for everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, another one. Yeah, mer, mer, mer person. <laughs> mer human. But I like, what did you call it? The falling? Reverse fallback. Reverse fallback. Yeah, just an, a term like that where it's clear what it is and it doesn't make people feel uncomfortable in any sort of way. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so interesting because we don't know where these pole tricks came from because we don't really know much about the history. Yeah, oh, yeah. Of like the Janeiro from Marion Crompe. Yeah, so let's talk about the ones that we do know. <laughs> like the, the Jamila. So that was one where we were like, okay, is it a Jamila or is it an apprentice? Uh -huh. And we couldn't find where where it was called the apprentice, like who started that. Um, but I was taught the apprentice. <laughs> and like then that's like yeah. a jasmine is it a jasmine or a viva yeah that's another one right i'd never even heard of viva mm -hmm. but i'd always heard it as jasmine um we couldn't find the origin of jasmine but for uh jamila we did find that it was jamila deville um, <laughs> <laughs> and she um yeah and she actually named the jade split as well after she saw um from what i read after she saw pantera blacksmith perform it um at a strip club so the Jade Split and Jamila came from Jamila DeVille, um, or were named by Jamila DeVille, allegedly. <laughs> <That'd be laughs> allegedly. And then, yeah, the Gennaro, um, someone had, had mentioned that it was Marianne from um, Bird of Paradise and Marley, or Marlo Friskin, from what we've read. Um, and then Allegra King, uh, Miss Pole Dance Australia, did the Allegra, which is where that one came from. Yes. But other than that, we couldn't find anything else. Who so, did? I feel like we met, we talked about the spatchcock. Oh, why can't I remember her name? Oh, Felix is Felix Kane. Felix Crane. You're right. Yeah. Crane. Oh, is it Crane? <laughs> I can't remember. God, she was one of the first ones I started watching years ago. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I believe that she did um create many moves. Yeah. I need to watch, find her videos again. It's been years. <laughs> <laughs> right? Over, oh you, know, like, you know how it is. Over the years, like you track and follow so many pole dancers and on social media, it gets overwhelming. And... Wow. <laughs> Did Anastasia Sokolova create some? Most likely, yeah. Quan Bui, I feel like there's a split spin named after him. Yeah. 
Coco Peacock, I feel like there's something named after him. Yeah, right. There's so many, but we could not track them all down. <laughs> If you know a resource, please reach out and we will be happy to make another episode. Um, or even if you want to converse with us about it and we'll talk about it here if you're like a researcher, note the stuff. Because a lot of people want to know this and we want to know it too. But Yeah, it is- yeah. Right? And it's, you know, to know it for fun too. Because, you know, just to know where they came from. <laughs> <laughs> but also like any, um, you know, as long as you are doing it in a safe way, any variation of a trick is going to be awesome. Um, and then if you know personally like a combo or a trick that um, that can, that you learned from someone, you can always list like who you learned it from. That's always good. And then other people will know as well. Um, yeah. But we'll get into maybe more on copywriting in another <laughs> episode <laughs> it's funny i mean always i think on social media especially always tag who taught you this maybe the studio or the instructor on youtube etc um if you're just messing around with tricks i mean you're just messing around with tricks but yeah like you said give credit yeah and especially if you're um a going to teach a combo that you learned from someone else um a lot of times if you reach out to the teachers they're going to be fine with it they might ask you to pay for it um and then you pay for it and then you can teach it um (laughs) (laughs) there was one time i reached out to a teacher if i could use a combo that she taught in my competition routine um she said yes because i paid for it i just needed to credit her and i did that so it was an awesome experience and many times you know, teachers come to me and ask if they could teach something that they learned from me. And I'm always cool with it because, I mean, it's movement. <laughs> I mean, it's really, I feel it's hard because we learn different pathways by ourselves, which look similar to others based on things we learned from others. It's really mm-hmm. hard to track. Right. I was thinking about that too. Like, let's say I learned a combo from someone five years ago and then I do it you know over the course of those five years it's going to be different um by the time you know and then it's like everyone the way you move is going to be unique to you no matter what because we all have a different body um or even to start a combo and like change something and make it yours or stuff like that yeah take this combo no you just found another pathway it's it's an interesting line but I guess that is for another episode for sure (laughs) right like the difference between like crediting someone and then being inspired by someone yeah Yeah. for a different episode (laughs) I think that's all of the I mean the importance of language and the language that you use in your personal pool community and your pool studio is absolutely up to you um, and, and if you feel like you need to standardize, standardize things, um, I think that's awesome, but I can't, I don't think that we should expect everyone to use the same terms always, um, cause we should all have our own unique communities <laughs> and not everything that works best for, you know, our pole in the wall community is going to work for everyone else. Yes. I know when I try to teach the tricks, I try to give all the names I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And let them like make their own options. Yeah. Um, Cause some of them, they have multiple names outside leg hook, outside leg hang, Gemini mm-hmm. hook, um, Gemini leg hang, like yeah. so many different names. So. Yeah. So, oh my goodness, it's overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> right it is- ball, which i've started playing around with and it's like a whole different ball game of crazy ass name <laughs> right and sometimes you'll learn a new name where it will help you understand the trick better so that's yeah. why i feel like it should always be evolving and you should make those decisions for yourself because yeah yeah <laughs> yeah like, i don't know if, that- if i don't know the name i'm just like 
inside elbow on the thing um, outside <laughs> leg hooked something like that like don't know the name but this is what it looks like right or I'll be like I don't remember the name right now I'm gonna remember it later I'm gonna email everyone and like update you as to what the name of it was so that you can practice it later <laughs> yeah I won't remember things a lot of times too yeah but that's how it is <laughs> yeah that that's all I had about the language and then um I looked up a whole bunch of because there's so many tricks and I was like how many tricks are there there's endless amounts of tricks there are whole dictionaries online where you can um add your own tricks into there and they curate it and then they put them out for the world so that everyone can experience the tricks um, there's also poll dictionaries where you can just add a video of a trick, a combo, whatever, and it'll you can call it whatever, and it will be added. And it's yeah. a huge directory, all willy-nilly, of everything. <laughs> but I think that's awesome. I think that that's so cool that there's so many different resources for poll tricks. Um, you know, on Instagram, you can search them by, is it hashtag PD and then the poll trick name? Mm -hmm. um and sometimes you you'll see the different names that people have hashtagged for that trick in there too um yeah it's a lot it is i feel, I feel like that directory is awesome but it also makes it harder to track like yeah these tricks where did this combo come from that's um, true right yeah you could have gotten a combo from someone else uploaded it as yourself and then people Excellent can users to learn for sure <laughs> it's a network but very hard to track <laughs> yeah yeah and, and i guess that all just depends on your own boundaries of what you want to share with the world and um i mean we can never be angry at people i know um, we're getting inspired from what we did <laughs> right that's another enough for another episode we will talk about gatekeeping but <laughs> talk about um, you know, we got to, all the resources are available. Um, you can contribute to them. You cannot contribute to them. Um, yeah. If you know <laughs> any like more Poe trick creators, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Resource. Yes. Got so yeah. many names. Right. Well, I think that's, I mean, that's all of the notes that I had for what I wanted to converse about for the origins of poll tricks, poll trick names and language. Yes. I mean, unless you want to bring up the word exotic, which again is another, um, if you look in blog around polls, um, history of modern pole dance, she gives a really good um, background as to why um, the word exotic might be something that you would think about replacing in your pole dance language um yeah yes i forgot about that um yeah i didn't realize that could be offensive to some people in some cultures right i also didn't realize it was but um me personally after i found out i um replaced that word um in all of our classes um because i felt uncomfortable using it yeah Ooh, maybe change latin flow to spanish erotic flow <laughs> right yeah yeah just just things that you you know you wouldn't think about but we should all take a look and think about you know the things that we do often and and always be learning and yes. the world is changing which is sometimes confusing but also beautiful at the same time Yes. <laughs> yes. Very confusing, but also beautiful. Right. And the thing to remember is to just like sometimes these things don't make sense. Um, and you, you know, you just have to remember to lead with love <laughs> and, you know, be patient and especially with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I got like all mushy at the end too funny um, <laughs> but yeah don't forget our virtual showcase coming up it is free to participate 
Um, you can have you can submit just a pull combo, um, just something you worked on in class, a fun choreo you learned, a whole piece edited or a whole unpiece edited. You could do a pole music video, which I always love to do. Um, just submit something for free and tell your friends. Um, it's not a competition. Everybody will get a lovely certificate at the end um, with a little QR code to access their video online, et cetera. Um, yeah, we will want to just give y'all a platform to kind of perform. Um, yes. Feel free right to it. Instagram handles and we'll put that on the video so people can follow you. I'm excited. Last year we had what, like six, seven people? Yes. This <laughs> year trying to go for double that. Yes. <laughs> Right, we want to celebrate uh, who we are on the pole yes. through a video. <laughs> All pole dancers, and we want to make it accessible to everybody from around the world who yes. just wants to submit something, give a platform to dance to and have other people watch. Yeah, um, yeah. And like we said, no pressure. It's not a competition. It's just a showcase. Even if it's just a trick you learned that you're so proud of or a class choreo that you're like, yeah, we slayed this. Yes. Um, I know sometimes creating a whole new routine is stressful. Don't add that stress to your life unless you want it. We would love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, send us anything. Um, I am upload. Yeah. By the time this airs, that will be ready for you to submit. Um, you'll be sending a Google link, which will allow us to download it. And yeah, prepare it. <laughs> Yay! So excited. <laughs> Which is our due in April. And it's free, so spread the word, please. Yes. It's a platform for all pole dancers. Yes. Overwhelm us with entries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a showcase, not a competition. Yeah. 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 No judging. There will be wonderful comments, of course, yes. in real time about, about your piece, which is always yes. fun. Maybe we are working on having comments from other people, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I think that is it. Oh, and we have other fun things coming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like so many things. Yes, but don't I forget can... whole trick posters, our cards, um, activity books um so many ways to learn pole dancing and yeah good times <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah and you can see all of our offerings on our website we've got like you said the pole pole trick um posters and all of that we've got courses we also have free things <laughs> stuff and more to come yeah mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, no. we made it. <laughs> Make sure to like and share this with others, please, please. Thank you so much. Like and share. We love it. Yes. That. And if you have any information for us that, that we have, you know, expressed incorrectly, um, feel free to reach out and correct us. Um, give us more information. We would love to, you know, make another episode about this because like, there's still many questions. <laughs> And topics to cover too <laughs> yeah yeah right it spurred like eight thousand other topics <laughs> <laughs> but yeah if there's any other topics that you want us to cover feel free to reach out and we always love comments and likes and shares and all of that and looking for people to interview or monday motivation picks and quotes yes yeah and you can just send in a whole picture of yourself and a quote and we'll post you on Monday and you will inspire everyone. <laughs> so excited. All righty. That is our episode for the day. We'll have all those links below, all those resources. As always, take the information as you will. Be safe with it and smart with it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love it. Well, thank you so much for watching or listening to this episode of Pull on the Call. My name is Mandy Mack. And I'm Chris Rivers. And we are <laughs> signing. Sign <laughs> 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 <laughs>